Up to now, we've only uh, talked about unimolecular enzyme reactions, which are actually fairly rare as far as enzymes are concerned. Uh, but what I want to look at right now is bimolecular enzyme reactions. And so what we have here is that this enzyme, it will only form a product whenever we have both of our, uh, both of our substrates. We're going to call it uh, substrate A and substrate B. Whenever both of the substrates are bound to the enzyme, at that point it will make products. And typically there will be two products. There will be product P and product Q. So uh, most of the time the, what happens is say A will have a group, uh, a, 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 an organic group or a, or a substrate that it can donate to B and it will use the enzyme to donate a, like a phosphate group or, or some other kind of uh, organic group to the, uh, to the other substrate. And so you have a uh, you have to have both of them bound to the enzyme. And that can happen one of two ways. It, you can have them enter uh, sequentially, where A binds first and then B, or it could be random, where B could bind and then A, or A could bind and then B, and it doesn't matter the order. So just to recap, we have, uh, we're only talking about one possibility at this point. There's two possibilities for bimolecular enzyme reactions. So the first one is that both both A and B have to bind. They have to be. They have to bind before any reaction can happen. And so we said that that can happen ordered in an ordered way, or it could happen in a random way. And then the second possibility is that A binds first to the enzyme, so A plus E. And then it creates uh, an, a modifier. So whenever A uh, comes off and forms a product P, we ha we're left with a modified enzyme. And that modified enzyme could be bound with B, and that would yield, uh, that would convert the enzyme back to its natural state and create Q. So that's the second way. The second way has a special name. It's called, it, it's actually called a couple things. It's called double displacement. So double D is what I'll call it, double displacement, or it's called ping pong. So ping pong. And by by uh, extension, this first one is called a single, a single displacement. So we can have single displacements that are ordered, single displacements that are random, or double displacements. And so the way you can tell the difference whenever you have a single displacement, whether it's random or ordered, is you can look at the, the uh, double reciprocal. And uh, what you get is you'll have, uh, if you keep the concentration of B, so if we have B, concentration of B uh, does not change. So it, it does not, there is, the change of B is equal to zero. So it does not change. Uh, then you, whenever you change the concentration of A, you end up with these graphs where you have the intersection point somewhere, uh, somewhere in this first quadrant. It's not on the y-intersect, it's not on the x-intercept, but it's somewhere in this first quadrant of the graph. Now if it's a random displacement and you keep the concentration of B so the change of B is zero, the concentration of B doesn't change, then what you get is uh, as you change concentrations of A, you will get, you'll get uh, a, a line that intercepts on the x-intercept. So allow me to, to explain this a little bit better. So on this first line right here, I'm keeping B constant and I'm changing A. And then on the second line here, I've changed B but I've kept it the same for this whole line and I've changed A. So I will call this this line is B1, this line is B2, and this line is B3. So I've only got three different concentrations of B in this graph, but I have an infinite number of possibilities for my concentration of A on each given line. And so this is the same one, B1, B2 and B3 and I don't know what those concentrations are exactly but if I look at this graph I can tell what kind of uh, what kind of single displacement mechanism this is whether it's random or ordered 
by looking at where those lines intersect. Now the way the reaction uh, is drawn is you have A plus E which yields, reversibly yields in a substrate enzyme complex which reversibly yields a double substrate and A and A will say AEB a double substrate enzyme complex which could uh, at that point release A and leave only uh, E and B and at that point could release and, and of course it could go back this way as well at that point it could release E and have E plus B and that could also go in reverse and at this point you could get you could get uh, let, let's slide this all over you could get uh, P E Q so A became P B became Q and then that could go and release Q and you would have E P which could reverse and that would result in P plus E which is reversible and then of course it could release P and you would have QE which would ultimately relieve Q plus E Q plus E which is reversible as well and so this is a random single displacement mechanism in an ordered reaction the leading substrate must bind first so in this situation we would have the enzyme and we could get we, we would have A that would bind with with it and you would get AE and then at that point you would get B that could bind with it and you could get uh, AE AEB and then AEB would at that point become PEQ and PEQ would would then uh, release and it would release so if B attached la last it would release Q first and so you would get um, basically this reversible Q and that would leave PE and then PE would be you release P and that's basically the mechanism you get and so what this is showing is that um, typically you're going to start with enzyme in, these, in, in this first substrate of course you could also start with the enzyme in this product and go back through and, and create the reactants or the reagents for the whole thing so in the double displacement reaction, so we just went through the two types of single displacement uh, for bimolecular reaction, and there's a uh, one type of double displacement, um, and basically what that means is that the enzyme will combine with the first substrate, and that first substrate will create both a product and a modified enzyme, and only then that modified enzyme can bind with the second substrate and that second substrate will do two things it will form a product and re uh, reestablish the original enzyme so that then A can go back and attach and the the thing is, the, it's called a ping pong reaction because A and it, basically A and B are basically bouncing back whether the enzymes in one conformation or the other and so the way you distinguish between uh, whether it's a, a double displacement ping pong reaction is on a Lynn Weaver Burke graph, you would you would graph one over V and one over one over A. You would you would keep your leading substrate the uh, you would you adjust your leading substrate and you would keep your your second substrate the same and you would get a graph of a line so if, if I had a concentration of B equals 3 we'll say B equals 3 here and then I changed B to 2 and then I adjusted B to 1 I would get three parallel lines by 
by keeping B constant and changing A the entire time, I would graph a line right here. And then by changing B a little bit higher and then keeping it constant while graphing a, uh, the activity with A, I get a second line here and then, of, of course, a third line here. And um, so whenever you have three parallel lines, by adjusting uh, the concentration of your second substrate by uh, a given amount, you will know that it's a bimolecular double displacement slash ping pong reaction.